Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Take a Deep Show. We are doing a special edition show tonight. This is a Charger Baseball Alumni Spotlight episode um, in conjunction with a lot of events we have going on this weekend on, at UNH campus um, and with our um, athletic department. We have taken my production, the Take a Deep Show, and kind of wedged it right into the middle of this whole thing. We're doing an alumni spotlight for, um, for three players who will be joining us, three alums um, that – played and um actually two of the three have coached in our program as well um but joining me right now actually for the first time on the take it deep uh show is um our associate head coach and my good friend tom rispoli um first congratulations on um a uh, a baby on the way this is some life news for you your first child i'm three years into my first um and as you know being with me virtually every day the adventure you're about to embark on will be nothing compared to what we do, you know, obviously day to day, but congratulations. Um, I trust everything's going well on that end. Um, how excited are you? Let's just talk about that for 30 seconds. You know, there, there's, there's a huge part of excitement. There's, I don't want to say nervousness. There's just, no, like, you can, oh. I had it. You can, <laughs> um, but beyond, you know, it's funny. I've always talked about this with people. People always say, Oh, when are you guys looking to have kids and everything else? And I'm like, well, we have 32 kids. I, I have 32 kids of my own. And my wife just happens to have probably about 24, 25. So now it's gotten to a real part where it's, all right, now they're actually your children. Yep. Um, we're, we're through the moon. I mean, honestly, we're, we're super excited. Um, it, it is going to be a little girl where uh, I think my wife is beyond pumped. She always kept saying, oh, my God, her little curls and everything else. So we're, uh, <laughs> we're excited for that little softball player or tennis player or dancer or whatever she's going to be. Yeah, I, and the one thing I will say, I said the same thing. I've got 30-plus of my own kids. Um, it is completely different once it becomes, you know, your child. Um, it's the best thing that ever happened in my, for me. Um, it, it, filled so, it filled a void I didn't even realize I had in my life. And um, I expect nothing um, but the same for you guys. Um, but moving on to why we're here, speaking of kids, it's funny how we're going to talk to three guys that we were around when they were quote-unquote kids or young men. Now they're into the real world. Now they're past playing in our program. Um, and now they're, they're, they're men. You know, we can, we almost, we're almost on that even playing field. It's funny how even with my old coaches, no matter how old I get, they're still coach. They're, I'm still the 18 to 22 year old or even younger, right? Like that never changes. Um, and I think all three of these guys that we end up speaking with um, will probably have the same, you know, the same kind of view on everything. Um, but talk a little bit, let's talk a little bit um, just for background on you. Obviously, for people that don't know, I got here in 2013. Um, you didn't come on um, until um, a little bit. I was here for a couple of years. Um, I was lucky enough to have you as a volunteer, obviously, for the 16 season. Um, and then the spring 17 season, um, we were able to get you on full time as, um, you know, basically our associate head coach and, and where you are now. Give us a quick snapshot, coach, of um, – you know, and don't, you don't have to kiss my butt too much, but, you know, the great experience you've had, obviously, so far. No, I, it really has been a great experience. I came from a Division three institution where I was coaching there for four years, and um, I just realized that that part time of my life, it was a lot of travel for me back and forth. Um, I was kind of rooted in the New Haven area. I decided to come back home and not travel so much, and obviously, I was fortunate enough to sign on as a volunteer position with you. Um, I, I tell this story to recruits a lot. Um, growing up, I grew up in Madison, Connecticut. It's about 20 minutes, 25 minutes um, east of New Haven. And the only thing I knew about the University of New Haven, by, besides coming to summer camp for a one-week baseball hitting camp, uh, I think back in 92 or something like that, um, was Boston Post Road. You drive through, you see the brick sign that says University of New Haven, and you go to West Haven Orange, you go shopping, you do whatever you want to do. And to me, that was the University of New Haven. I knew nothing about it. Um, and, I, and I tell this story to recruits all the time. When I went to meet you for the first time up at the office, up at North, um, I accidentally parked down South to, at, at main campus and had to walk all the way through. And I looked around and I thought I was in some sort of Southern little Baptist town where I went to Campbell University in North Carolina and it had that campus feel, like a firm and like a Campbell and a smaller thing, but it was so unique and it was so all encompassing um, and it was great. And it was a campus 
kind of atmosphere that I had no idea even existed. And obviously it was a, a very positive experience me walking through for the first time. And as you were explaining, we, we've been joined by our first guest and our first distinguished alum, um, Krista Morris. What's um, up, guys? Thank you for joining us. I, we're off the bat, I love that. I hope you didn't just put that banner up for the show. No, and no, I did not. Definitely did I not. I have a yeah. feeling, yeah. I out. have a feeling that that is part of your normal decor. I, oh, I, that, that, it, it is my, it's my only decor. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, that we, now that we've gotten that out of the way, um, again, thank you for coming on. We, we've, been, uh, we've been talking and reminiscing a little bit about um, the past couple of years, and obviously um, I'm going to have you on and, and then two guys that you're familiar with, Josh Walker and Joey Royer, um, after you. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but let's just get right into the Krista Morris story. Um, so Demo, as he's affectionately known as, um, when I took over in 2013, the, well, the fall of 12, spring of 13 was my first year. Um, on paper, it was your junior year. Um, in term Sophomore year. sophomore year. I'm sorry. Your sophomore yeah, year. Um, and, you know, talk about a little bit about your experience with the head coach that recruited you leaves, you know, a, a new staff comes in. Um, we can tell the story because obviously it ended. We know how it ended. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then, yeah. It ended well. So we can, we can describe <laughs> yeah. that, but you're coming out of Conard high school in West Hartford um, yeah. and, and kind of go through that, that, that timeline a little bit of, you know, you chose UNH and, and then where you went from there. Yeah, sure. First of all, Tommy Raspoli, great to see you, man. I miss you. I love you. I hope everything's going well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so Coach Solano, he, he took over the helmet at New Haven my sophomore year. And, and quite honestly, to be very blunt, it was just I had to prove myself all over again. You know, I, I was not, no longer playing for the, for the whole coaching staff left. So I had to prove myself to an entire new coaching staff. And quite frankly, it, it, you know, it was, it was a little bit rough going at the, at the beginning. You know, I, uh, I, I promise up, this has a good ending. I promise. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. This is the only way, only way I'm saying it. But, uh, um, yeah, it had, a, it had a rough go. You know, I, I had, you know, certainly some trials and tribulations that, you know, were associated just to the big change. And, and I couldn't make the necessary adjustments, to say the least. But, um yeah, it was an injury. The injury bug started to started to hit me hard. You know, I, I the first time I met you, I, my leg was in a boot. Yes, <laughs> so I was like, oh, here we go. You know, so I was I in a boot for about eight eight weeks, um, and then I hit the field, and I was already behind. You know, in terms of the evaluation process, that obviously you go. You know, me being a former collegiate coach, I, I get it now. You know, so um, I didn't get my opportunity until the end of that year. Um, and, uh, you know, offensively I did well, I still didn't really have a position, you know, I, I still didn't have a position moving, moving through the rest of my career, but we figured it out. Um, yep. and, uh, and, you know, it worked out to the point where, again, I just have to give you and Trez a lot of credit, you know, Alex Trez was the assistant coach at the time. And, um, you know, I just, I just appreciated the opportunity and, and with the opportunity came, obviously the the next step which is my junior year and that's when I broke out and uh, started to uh, get noticed uh, from a professional standpoint yeah so just to just to jump in there um, I will say that obviously there was that evaluation period for everyone right when we, sure. we yeah oh yeah without a doubt and the one thing I remember very early on Demo is and, and talking to, to coach Trez at the time it wasn't that we didn't think you're going to have a bright future it was just kind of figuring out where everybody gelled. Like you said, you were behind a little bit from the physical standpoint and those things. But I remember vividly at the end of your first year, you really, once you started getting consistent at bats, I remember telling Trezza, this guy's going to be our best hitter. And I know we have guys like Ryan Brockett. I know we have guys that, you know, turned out to be tremendous baseball players offensively, right? Yeah. But I told him that you would be our three hitter. There's just, you know, there's, there's, no, there's going to be no doubt about it. Um, so, you know, these are all the conversations that you didn't know about. Yeah, of so course. So we, we get into what is your junior year. Yeah. And then you talk about how, you know, we went from we, – we, we kind of shocked the world my first year, got into the tournament, and a guy that we're going to have on later as a freshman goes out there and shuts out pace in an, an elimination game, the one-and-done any yeah. 10 first-round game. Joey, and we, loved, Joey loved that game, man. Yeah. <laughs> and and not rewind the weekend before we needed to win two out of three against Adelphi to even get in. 
We right. drop the first one in extra innings, and then we sweep them at their place. Um, ta- then that next season, we added a couple of key pieces on the recruiting end of things, and you then stepped up along with you know guys like Brendan Buckley and guys in that lineup that were um, experienced and talented. Right. But I think you were the missing piece in my mind. I knew we had you know, some experience. I knew we had guys um, – that we could count on from the year before, but I felt like if you could continue, you would be the X factor because our lineup just would have, that to me would have put us over the top with a guy that in my mind was a professional hitter at that point. I knew you were, were you going to get a chance or not? I didn't know, but I, I thought you would definitely be that piece. Um, and not to, not to steal your thunder, but then we go on and that year, which was my second year and your second year with me, yeah. we win the first any 10 conference championship that new Haven's ever won. Yeah. Uh, and you're a huge part of that. Take us through what you're remembering about that season um, or what you remember. Um, I have a lot of memories. Um, sure. yeah. You know, it was the first one, right? But right. go ahead. Well, I mean, I'll start from, from, from the, the end of the season and move my way up. You know, you always remember that dog pile. You, yeah. know, you know, the first and, and my last dog pile. Um, obviously, I had the opportunity to, to win a conference championship with with you guys as a, as a grad assistant, yeah. um, which, which was wonderful. We didn't dogpile, but we did something else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the, that's the memory you really remember. You know, it, it's, it's not all the, it's not all the losses at the end of the day. It's, it's all the, it's all the wins. It's all the, the positive memories and moments that you shared with your teammates and, and, you know, with your coaching staff. Um, big shout out to Peter J and Joe Romanelli. Still, still my good friends to this day. I still live with Joe actually. Um, you know, hey, no offense to everybody else on the roster. Yeah, that the house you live in right now was the glue to that team. Yeah, with, uh, with our catcher being Romanelli and Peter J being being probably the best relief pitcher on the planet that year. Oh my god! Yeah. And then with you, it's probably the three. No offense to anyone else on that roster. Probably the three most important pieces of our team were were you three guys. There's no question. Yeah, was, yeah, and I appreciate that, and I, I agree with you. You know, Peter J, you bring him in for a two two out, I mean, two inning, maybe three inning save, and the game's over. We all knew it. It was and over. And then Joe, Joe really developed well under Trezza's helm, you know, as as a catcher and the leader of of the team when when we're on the defensive part of the ball side of the ball. But uh, the one thing I will say that kind of helped everything click, you know, because I had that breakout offensive season, and uh, you know, I was actually button into a conversation Trezza was having with the with the catchers and he was talking about how to deal with a pitching staff right and he was like I want you guys to instill in them and I think this is your philosophy anyways like pound the zone be aggressive right strike one all right and and I made I made a comment to him and uh, I think it was who was it might have been like Marcus Stroman or something it was it was a big league pitcher maybe David Price actually Marcus Stroman was too young and he says my goal was for the hitter to be on base or out in three pitches or less. So I made that comment, you know, it was kind of just off. I was waiting for, I think it was individuals. I was waiting for my individual group to go. And he turned to me and he was like, why don't you think like that as a hitter? And I was like, wow. Okay. And sure enough, I mean, you can even go look at the stats. I didn't walk very much. No, it got to the point where I was super confident. I was going to hit the ball, hit the ball hard. So why not go up there hacking? And um, you know, that was something that, for a long time, I wasn't able to do pull the trigger on that first pitch, and, and it kind of changed everything for me because it went from a, a passive mindset to an aggressive aggressive mindset, and um, and that's really I think mentally was really what helped develop me along because I came I, I won't lie I came into New Haven as a soft kid, you know from from <laughs> West Hartford, Connecticut, you know, and uh, I needed some tough love. I got some tough love, and and it only helped me grow into you know, what I think now, and I'm confident in saying, you know, a quality young man that the University of New Haven, the baseball program, especially, you know, helped me, helped me become, so. And not to, not to kind of fast forward and gloss over some important things. Sure. You get to two seasons later, June comes around, you get the phone call that every college guy loves to get, and tell me who's on the other end of that phone call on whatever it was, July 5th, uh, June 5th, 6th, whatever it was. Yeah, I kind of – are we allowed to swear on your podcast or should I keep it coaching? Not for this one, no. Okay. Well, I kind of I kind of, I kind of feel like a bonehead because his uh, his name is escaping me right now. But, uh, Tim Alexander. 
There you go, Tim Alexander. I got the yep. Alexander part. I was I was thinking Steve for some reason, but anyway, yeah. So Tim Alexander gave me a call about five minutes before I went. You know, I went late, 38th round, 2014 draft to the to the race, and he he called me and all he said was, "Hey, you're in play. Click." You know, <laughs> it was like it's like okay, I'm playing I'm playing video games with my cousin, you know, <laughs> and uh, and sure enough, before I got the call. My dad, it had updated on online. My dad hadn't been following the draft online. Yep, me too. After he, I could hear him downstairs absolutely going ballistic and stuff like that. So I was like, I turned to my cousin. I was like, I think I just got drafted. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, it was just it was just so matter of fact like that. And sure enough, Tim called me back and was like, hey, we, we selected you. Um, I'll, I don't have time to talk too long now, but I'll give you details tomorrow about, you know, signing and going through the paperwork and and what's next so he even he even made the comment because I was pretty cool calm and collected I guess he was like are you excited (laughs) but uh um yeah of course I I was almost I was I was I didn't know what to say you know I was awestruck so it was it was definitely it's everything that you that you dream of happening and it's everything that you prepare prepare for and work so hard to accomplish it's almost, you know, in hindsight now, I almost wish I, I had dreamed and hoped for things that happened after getting drafted. Because once I got drafted, it's like, well, what happens next? You know? Right. So, yeah. but, uh, but that's another story. Yeah. So not to fast forward, like I said, and, and yeah. gloss over the pro stuff, we get to after your playing career and then talk about someone for our program that has worn every single hat you can wear. You went from a player, right? Yeah. A successful player who yeah. got drafted to then becoming our graduate assistant after you were done playing, you get your master's degree, then you are a volunteer, then you have a season as a full-time coach. So you've yeah. essentially done, basically, I don't think there's anything left to be. You can't yeah. really be, you hit every single rung on the uh, UNH baseball ladder. Um, and, you know, I think Coach Raspoli can attest, you know, we had a great um, run with you as our GA um, and, and I don't think it was any coincidence with you on our staff that we had the success we had. Not only did you throw phenomenal batting practice, oh, uh, there was just value all the way around. And, and, and coach, anything you remember about obviously having uh, Demo on staff, um, you know, share something, share something you, you, that comes to mind. Yeah, absolutely. I, the, the first thing I want to say is the next thing to do, I guess, is to be AD and take over and be our bosses. Yeah. Demo. That would be <laughs> the next thing. <laughs> to it you just fast forward right to ad next i'm in i'm in <laughs> um yeah i mean if there's and there's a lot of words that can come to mind if there's two it's energy and passion i mean what you brought to to every team that we've kind of coached and been a part of it's to me those two things and everybody has different roles as not only players but obviously coaching staff and support staff and everything else i think the energy you brought day to day the the passion and i'd even say positivity you brought day to day for those kids it was infectious. And, and obviously they kind of um, took, I think some of them took your personality, like literally just wanted to be your best friend, which is actually <laughs> a really good thing in a lot of things because yeah. they loved it so much. Um, and it was great. It was, like I said, infectious. It was just what you brought to them. And it, it's an inspiring quality to have um, being around a couple of different programs, coaching at the college level. You don't always get that. And I think a lot of times we take for granted. Um, I, I can tell you, wholeheartedly that coach Solano and I didn't take it for granted. We talk about it all the time about you and all positive things, but the element that you brought to the program as a whole is just, I mean, it's, it's second to none. It was fantastic. And obviously had a huge part of why we won those years. Yeah. And and what's unique is think about it. You got to experience it as a player winning a conference championship, playing in regionals, then to be in the same program as an alum coach, then go through it as a coach, which not a lot of guys can say they did that. Yeah, it was, I mean, uh, talk about, yeah, co- everything coming full full circle. I can firmly say I, I bleed blue and gold, you know, because yep. um, uh, it's just given me such a platform to, to you know, escalate my life uh, to, to where it is now. But, um, but yeah, well, I mean, so much hindsight, I mean, it's such a different perspective being on the other side of the ball, you know, because it goes from, you know, I, I, Coach Raspoli, he didn't coach me as a player, but speaking right to you, Coach Solano, you know, seeing, interacting you, with you as a player versus interacting with you as somebody on your staff who you trusted 
to, to help develop the players on your team. You know, it was, I wouldn't say much different because your personality is, is, is very consistent, which any player will, will appreciate. But, you know, it was nice to see some of the, some of the different sides of you that obviously for obvious reasons as a coach, you can't necessarily show those sides to a player with, for reasonably so, you know, and, uh, and, and I, I learned so much from, from yourself and then, and then from, uh, you know, from Tommy as well, especially when I had to jump into the role of coaching third base you know, I would sit there all day long and be like, what would Tommy, what would Coach Foley <laughs> do right now? You yeah. know? Um, and uh, it was it was quite a whirlwind up to that point. But I got to say, the only, and I really have to be honest here, the only reason why I am currently in the, the position where I am, which I'm, I'm thriving and, and growing quite quickly as a real estate professional, it's, it's solely because of not to take this away from baseball and the program, but it's the conversation that you and I had coach at the end when we made the decision that it made the most sense for everybody for me to move on and, and really get my life going. And it, it was that, that kind of kick off the ledge and having that honest and upfront conversation with you that really helped me, you know, you know, grab, grab my balls and, 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 and do what, I ultimately wanted to do. And, and I think you saw that m more so than I was willing to give yep. credit for it. And I really appreciate that. So thank you. Well, it, you know, as, as one of my guys and, and you and I have talked about this, you never stop coaching, right? Like you never. And, and to me, that was a moment where I knew you were at that crossroad and I knew, you know, um, I knew what the heart wanted, but maybe the brain should take over and, and think long-term and big picture yeah. and, and to, to achieve the goals that ultimately you wanted to do. And in closing, let's talk about that. Catch us up to speed. What, what is Krista Morris doing right now? I know you touched on it. Um, are, uh, are we a real estate mogul? Where are we? <laughs> Not yet, but definitely in the works. Um, so I'm, I'm a real estate professional. Uh, I'm a realtor. I, I'm licensed. Um, but I say professional because I also deal a lot with the investment side of real estate. So I'm licensed under Remax Right Choice in Milford. Um, for anyone watching who cares, you can check me out on Chris D Properties on Facebook. You know, message me there if you want to connect. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, you know, investing is what truly got me involved in real estate. Um, I have three properties now, seven units that I rent out and manage and operate. Um, and I'm just finishing up a, uh, a huge reno, like a $200,000 renovation on a multifamily in, in Wallingford which uh, which I'll have tenants uh, in the units uh, come mid-October. So it's uh, it's truly the passion, it, it, you know, the passion I had for baseball. You know, I call I call baseball my life's passion, but real estate is definitely my professional passion and, and my career. And, and it's what I'm going to do for for the rest of my life, you know, because it's it's not a job. You know, when you can wake up every day and you know, do something that makes you money and it doesn't feel like you're working. I mean, it's, yep. a, I'm sure you guys have the same feeling because you guys are doing something you love and uh, it, it's, I enjoy it, you know, and, and coaching never stops. It never stops. I'm always in a position to educate, you know, and to help somebody better understand the, the situation they're in and better understand the, the direction that they're going. So I, I, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that I learned as a player in baseball and as a coach in baseball that uh that helped me now in my career yeah so do you do you um at this point i mean it's it's fair to say obviously um you know it's nothing but fond memories um looking back um i will i i didn't mention this before and i will after that 13 season and, and coach spoiler you weren't around yet after that 13 playoff tournament victory um you know, DeMorris and the boys did um, – they, they did take it upon themselves to celebrate um, in a certain manner that, um, you know, may or may not have caused some neighborhood issues that night, which um, I had to go deal with. Um, but I will admit that it was um, – I had a grin on my face the whole time while dealing with our, our then AD and trying to sort out the mess they created in that, that celebration that night. Um, so I didn't want to let that skate. I, 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 you know, we had to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I think the reason that we coach and, and, and Coach Espoli will agree, at the end of the day, yeah, we want to win and we want to have those banners that are right behind you. Um, but the relationships and, and the lasting ones are the reason that this job becomes a passion for me. 
you know, being able to have the relationship I have with you um, and, and still to this day have um, and have these conversations on, on alumni podcasts and all those things um, makes it well worth it. Because a Krista Morris never would have crossed my path if I didn't come to UNH and didn't coach here. Um, and much like, a, a, much like a Tom Rispoli or anybody else. So um, just know that the value that you feel you've gotten, you, and, and I'm sure Coach will agree, you've given us you know, tenfold back. Um, you know, alums like you, Demo, have, have, have really made this thing you know, what, what it should be. You know, that's the highest compliment I could probably give you. Um, but we will uh, we'll definitely look, obviously, if, if anybody out there has a housing need, um, has some real estate questions or needs, um, I give um, Chris Morris my highest recommendation, <laughs> um, you know, and uh, please feel free to reach out. Um, it, was great to, it was great to have you on. And um, not that we want to kick you off, but these 15, 20-minute uh, yeah. segments go quick. Um, I'm sure down the road on future episodes of uh, the Take It Deep show, um, now, not to mention the fact you have also seen our show broadcast live. You're one of the, you yeah. know, five people probably that, that did show. I was on it too. I was on um, it. You know, yeah, you were, you did it yeah, here. My first, um, my first so plug. Was awesome. You're right. You do bleed everything blue, gold, yeah. <laughs> and, and New Haven. So, um, yeah. but we will be um, back in touch and, and hopefully to have you on in the future. Um, we wish you obviously nothing but the best and, and stay safe during these times, obviously. Um, it's a little unique for everyone. Um, Coach Rispoli, any parting shots that you want to throw at Demo, feel free. <laughs> Great to see that smile and face, kid. And uh, I know Coach brought this up a little earlier on the podcast. I haven't gotten the opportunity to tell you, and not to make it all about me, but uh, my wife and I are going to be having a little girl in February. No! So kind of the quick update. Yep. Good so, uh, Congratulations. I appreciate it. I, uh, it's funny because she's been calling a lot of people and Zooming and everything else. And I'm like, ah, I, I'm that old school Italian that wants to tell everybody in person. And yeah. coach is like, oh, we're bringing a couple of the guys on. So anybody who haven't seen it already. So, Dude, yeah. that's great. Congratulations, man. Thanks. Guys. That's, that's so great. But, um, but yeah, I, I love you guys. My life would not be the same if I hadn't met you guys. And, uh, you know, go Chargers. I'll, I'll see you guys soon. Talk soon. Sounds right? good, Demo. Be safe. Right. Take care. Take care, Demo. Folks, that was Krista Morris. Um, again, after hearing his story um, and, and talking about it and, and kind of recapping, um, he was on that team, that first, that first group of guys that I, quote unquote, inherited when I got here and um, became the centerpiece, one of the centerpieces to that team. Obviously had a fantastic career and, and is obviously doing well now. And coach, we talk about it all the time. It, it feels really good to talk about the success our former players are having you know, once they leave us and once they move on into the real world and once they, they really figure out what they want to do in life, um, we're going to get to talk to our next alum who is actually still playing and talk about getting to do what you want to do. Um, you know, he'll, he'll be able to touch on that. But guys like Krista Morris went to the business world and um, are now successful. Um, you know, I, I know you probably feel the same way. That, that's why at the end of the day, that's the rewarding part of this job for me. Yeah. I I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, we talk to people, whether they're our current players or, or potential recruits or even alumni afterwards, that's kind of the biggest compliment to me. Um, in my opinion, you know, you're running a, a successful program and you can mark the definition of success any way you want. But to me, when guys are coming back and they're giving back and they're proud of where they went to school and they made those good memories and um, it comes full circle to do something like this, come on your head coach's podcast to talk yeah. a little bit about, about your memories. I mean, to me, that's success. And again, you define it how you want, but it, it makes it all worthwhile. It makes all of that kind of investment that you put in as a either a coach or a player or whatever it is, you know you're doing good things when people are coming back and, and enjoying their experience and giving their feedback. So moving on to our next guest, who's going to be on in about a minute, Josh Walker um, was a left-handed pitcher um, who was with us for two seasons um, and then was – lucky enough to get drafted by the New York Mets and is still in their organization. Um, Coach, wh real quick, what, what, any, what are your, your fond memories of, of Josh and, and your time coaching him, which he's actually about to jump on, but you can continue anyway. We'll, we'll flatter him right off the, right off the uh, jump here. Well, I'll give him one. I'll knock him right before he comes on about his nickname of Josh Balker, his first time down <laughs> in Myrtle Beach. And I think he, uh, he balked a couple times in our, in our first opening day, but – 
I, I do remember the following year, um, I forget who we were playing, but it was early in the year. Um, he threw a pitch, and I think we both looked at each other and just said, well, that's unhittable. This kid's going to be a pro. Um, and I think from <laughs> yeah. that point on, it was early on in the season where we just kind of looked and said, yeah, you're not going to hit that at this level. And honestly, we both had uh, our own little kind of cup of tea in some sort of professional baseball. I think we just knew this, he was built for professional baseball. Yeah. So I see, I see your, I, I don't see your face, but I think you might be on Josh. Do we have you? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. How you doing guys? It's great to up. see you. Man. I know you're, I know you're driving. So we do want you to keep your eyes on the road. Um, yeah, where, that's where why are you I like going? to go. No video. Where, where are you heading uh, to right now? I'm heading to Instructs, actually, for uh, with the team. I'm heading down to Florida. I was out in Oklahoma with my buddy. We were training for uh, a little over a month. We were out there, one of my other teammates. And uh, we just got uh, a call last week that we were both invited to go down to Instructs. So we're going down there with another, like, 50 or so guys, get some more work in. So just finishing up my ninth hour of driving today. Good well, luck up here. Hopefully we can make your next 20 minutes, 15 minutes go a little quicker. Um, just to catch everybody up, um, Josh Walker um, was in our program for um, two seasons. And in his second season with us, he was a transfer. I'll let him talk kind of about um, how he entered into the, the UNH baseball world and his whole story. But he was drafted by the New York Mets after his second season with us. And just to, just to kind of piggyback on Coach Raspoli's quick story, I remember your second season, Josh, coming – Coming back in the fall, you had pitched all summer in the Hamptons League on Long Island. Um, and I remember it probably was your second bullpen. And that's when I went to – Coach, that's when I went to you and said, I, I don't think we're going to keep this kid here more than one more year. Like, he, he has turned the corner. There's no doubt about it. Um, so, Josh, give us, give us your, your, your pretty much your origin story. Um, you transferred into UNH. Tell us about that whole process um, and, and kind of your whole – um, experience and what you remember about being in, in the Charger baseball uh, family? Uh, yeah, sure thing. Uh, well, uh, coming out, uh, transferring, transferring over, I remember I had uh, – I played actually in the Hamptons this, the summer prior also. And uh, coming out my first my first season at New Haven, I was kind of – I was kind of uh, scattered as far as my mechanics went. I was a little bit lost experimenting with certain things and the, and like mentally that was kind of kind of getting to me here and there and I was, so I was trying to figure things out I was a little bit lost and uh, I showed up I had in the fall of 2015 and uh, so I came to you guys that that year was like a little bit tough year that was the balker year I believe right <laughs> yep and, yep uh, yeah and uh so that whole season was like a little bumpy for me, trying to figure things out, coming into the coming into the program, you know, a big lefty, feeling like expectations on me. I put a lot of pressure on myself as far as, uh, you know, my performance goes. And I really was like unhappy with how how I had been performing personally and just trying to trying to grit it out, trying to trying to figure things out and, you know, get back on the right track. And when I came back, I uh, went out to the Hamptons after that first year at UNH and kind of had a nice like mental uh, mental switch, different frame of mind where, you know, I was going to stop concerning myself with such tiny little tweaks and, and this and that, and I think focus on different parts of my mechanics. And I was going to just basically say, screw it. I'm going to, I'm going to whip the ball in there and I'm going to just feel it naturally and not try to think about making this or that happen. Um, and then, Coming back in the fall of 2016 with you guys, like being able to collaborate with you and Raspoli and, and uh, the guys we had around us that year just really made everything sync up. Like I kept that, I kept that same mentality coming from the summer. And I know me and you, when we were working on our bullpens, it was at that point, it was like I was letting it eat a little bit more. I dropped my slot down a little bit, and you had some good tips for me coming into that fall. And from then, it just it, it grew. It grew into uh, a good season that we had. Um, but really, what really uh, helped helped, like in my mind, give me confidence and give me give me the the energy and the mindset to go out there and you know be be more of a dog and get after it was 
was uh, how close we were as a team, as teammates. When we instituted that the hold the rope from the get go that year, it made everybody mesh. We had some some transfer guys, new freshmen, and everybody bought into it right away. And the energy of the team just propelled. Like I felt like it propelled everybody to just perform uh, almost like at their highest at that at that point in time. And we ran with it. And I feel like so many guys had success that year, and I was just feeding off everybody's energy and trying to uh, just do my do my part for the team. And, uh, you know, it ended up being a great year, and, and the end result, getting, getting to play pro ball afterwards was just an absolute blessing. So, like, that, that year as a whole, that energy that we had as a team, you know, us always collaborating, talking about this and that mechanically and figuring out figuring out what I needed to do to get better, like, that – that was the turning point right there was that was that uh, fall of 16 and spring of 17 where we went and uh, took the conference championship that was that was definitely the, uh, the turning point for me and that that's a pretty good description in my mind of exactly how it played out um, I remember when we first got you and, and you fir- your first year with us um, I saw exactly what you described I saw you trying to kind of with your delivery in any in in general terms trying to you know tweak things and kind of do it almost on the fly as you were pitching and um you know i do think mentally you were in a you were weren't in a good place um and i felt like i i made up my mind that i wasn't going to be as aggressive as one would think with trying to make changes with you um i felt like going the other way with you where you know i, I would kind of do it <clears throat> almost on the sly where I'd kind of just mentioned some things. And if it took a little time for it to resonate, resonate in your mind and, and have you apply it, it would feel almost like you were doing it rather than me telling you to do it. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. And I felt like someone like you, it just personality wise. Um, I always said this, you were a guy that um, you were a guy that was a challenging um, personality for a coach, which I don't think is a bad thing. Um, I actually enjoy that. Um, I don't need many yes people around me to succeed. I actually need the other, you know, and it's kind of like the relationship I have with coach where, you know, I, I don't mind that feedback. And I think, you know, from being around me, I don't pretend to have the end all be all answers. I do know that I know the direction that will lead to success though. So to me, I felt like I was kind of just doing it slowly and how you described it was basically exactly how it happened. I think even in that tough first season, Josh, there were still some things that got ironed out. Then going away and kind of being on your own, quote unquote, for the summer was really where you took it by the horns and then came back. And, you know, again, four weeks later, I was talking to coach and saying, yeah, we're not, we're not going to have him back for another year. There's, there's no way he's, he's going to be a pro. Um, I remember that city series that we won, which actually was the last city series that ever went, went down because it's no longer a thing. Um, that to me was your coming out where you came in against Southern Connecticut and were basically unhittable for, I believe it was at least three innings, um, maybe four. And right then and there too, I knew you'd be a huge piece of that following spring where, as you mentioned, we were able to win the um, conference tur- tournament and, and do the things we did and, and play in regionals. Um, but talk a little bit, Josh, about that day where, um, you know, it's, it's early June and that whole draft thing comes along. And um, I know you had gotten a lot of feedback and calls and, and a lot of scouts were getting in contact before the actual draft happened. Um, kind of describe that whole process and, and, and your experience with it. Uh, yeah, sure thing. Uh, well, coming up, well, to, just to go back on and uh, give a little feedback to what you just uh, were talking about before that. Uh, that 2016 season, like I personally, it's like I'm super hard on myself mentally. I just I'm never usually never happy with with where I'm at. Always trying to like get better, and I put a lot a lot of pressure on myself. And that just that 2016 season, I was doing that a lot. I was hindering myself almost like mentally. Like I was I was had a bad mindset, like you said, and and it was almost like a slap in the face that that year that year uh, that whole or more so like a kick in the ass like all right, like this isn't how we're doing it. And I had to come back in 2017 with that new mindset. And that, that city series was definitely that rivalry with, uh, with Southern Connecticut, or I'm sorry, <coughs> excuse me, 
that uh that rivalry with them they uh they really made me want to turn it on and do it for the team because we knew you know they were our rivals and we wanted we wanted to get them like we we were getting after it we were fired up we were ready and i knew i was not going to let down like anyone on our team like that was the tone setter of the year we knew it just like you said and i was just trying to go out there and, and like i was saying before just like be a dog and not not being like fearful of any outcome and just trying to, you know, embody everything that we wanted to be that year. And so that mentality just carried through the year. And I honestly, I wasn't really expecting, expecting to get drafted. I knew we all had a great year. I knew I was like a tall lefty and, you know, I'm, I'm, I have uh, potential, you know, it's got to see potential, but I wasn't thinking I, like I was a lock for the draft like one way or the other uh, until we had that, we had a, uh, the one workout in front of the Mets that you you let me know about basically like a week before we headed out to play in the Futures League. And I think it was like me, Joe, and, and uh, Wally that were all going out there to play that year. And we were all at that same workout together. And that was, that was, that went well also. And so I was like, I was a little bit optimistic after that talking to uh, some of the scouts that were there watching. And, um, and when I got the call, I remember I was I was kind of just denying it to myself. Like I didn't want to let myself de- like I didn't want to be disappointed by getting getting uh, this thought on my mind. It's like this is it. Like I'm getting drafted. Like and and then be disappointed if my if my name wasn't called. So I, I remember I was out. We were playing travel ball. We were at an away game and uh, we were shagging balls in the outfield. And the coach called me into the to the dugout, waved me on over, and as I'm running in. Wally just like starts sprinting in with me from like where he was at shortstop and like I couldn't help but like have like the biggest smile on my face seeing him run at me like a, like we were like we've been playing together since we were 12 years old man and it was like everything finally just just culminated to that one minute, that one moment that's like finally like the dream was realized when it when, when he told me and it like it, it actually did hit me uh, it was it was absolutely just invigorating, and I, it was an absolute blessing. I like, I was having a whole head high, body high, like it felt like nothing I'd ever felt before. When you're working on working towards this goal that you've had since you basically since you could walk, since you were in Little League, uh, and you know having that dream realized was just it, it felt like otherworldly. It was awesome, and to be able to share that moment uh, with one of my teammates that I've been with for. You know, basically, the majority of my baseball journey was just unbelievable. It was absolutely awesome. So, if you, it, we we talk back about that season and Coach Spoli, I I, I kind of look at that city series that year um, as exactly what Josh said. That that to me defined what I thought was going to be our spring, um, and not not so much in terms of wins and losses, but you know, we saw the pieces of our team at work in a real competitive environment that we wanted to win, um, even though it was the fall. Um, we saw how the team was probably going to gel in game. But I think more importantly, we saw what Josh just described, a group of guys all pulling in that same direction. And quite frankly, too, I mean, for you and I, it was that first time where we really got to put our heads together in games um, and to come away with, you know, the win there, beating Yale in a great game the first night, um, which is always special to do. And then obviously winning the thing the next day. Um, what do you remember about that or, or even anything from that spring that may include Josh? Or um, I remember a, a game, it was zero degrees outside against Bentley where Josh threw five innings out of the bullpen. Nobody could score a run. And then Tommy Walraven, who you've described, Josh, uh, ends up stealing home for us to walk it off. And we don't win that game without you. Um, but, but coach, going back to you, um, what are some of the things that, that really hit home for you about you know, that year and Josh's involvement and, and those things? Absolutely. A couple things. I mean, just to kind of retract back to the city series a little bit to uh, kind of piggyback on what you said, coach, that was the culmination of, of their hard work for about six weeks. Um, and I think you and I kind of put our heads together when I kind of came on full time that, that summer and really kind of looked back and, and dove into, okay, how are we going to, how are we going to turn around from what could have been a better season the previous year to make sure to ensure that success is going to happen. Um, and I think that we kind of together came up with a plan of about investment and about kind of selfishness, um, selflessness. And to Josh's point on everything he said, th- 
those guys didn't care about their personal accolades. Those guys didn't care about how they did, whether they went over three or three for three or whatever it was, it was about winning. Um, and they fed off of each other wanting to kind of pull in that same direction. I know we used the rope um, that year a little bit, but I think that's what it was. It was, you wanted to give it all. Um, and just like we talk as coaches all the time about the investment that it takes to kind of do this job and to be a part of these programs, um, you're only successful when you invest. Um, and to talk a little bit about Josh, so for anybody who doesn't know Josh, he's, uh, he's quite a specimen. He's six 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 seven, lefty. He's got about one ounce of body fat on him. Um, if, if, if you really want a quick reference, think um, Ivan Drago from Rocky IV, um, or Dolph Lundgren is his real name, kind of built the same way, um, a very super athletic six foot six six seven, whatever it is. So. Yeah, just input him into any NFL lineup to play tight end right now, and he'd be successful. He's, he's just that guy. But the reason why I bring it up is – Josh is the type of kid on a team, and I'd say even a mediocre team, a successful team, whatever you want to do, that can skate through. That can just kind of go through conditioning and not draw negative attention because he's just that much of an athlete. He never did that. He was always the first to still push himself, and, and he spoke on this little bit. He was probably harder on himself than anybody else was, but he wanted perfection. He wanted success. He wanted to be the best that he could, um, and obviously from a team dynamic, having somebody of that stature – um, pushing himself absolutely was that leadership quality that um, a couple of your teammates obviously possess it as well, but that that team really needed. They needed somebody kind of big and strong to go out and give it all they had for everybody. And, and I know you kind of talk about Wally, obviously, um, as we call him Coach Wall Raven now, is uh, as a special spot in my heart as well. But I know your relationship together. Um, when you were telling that story, Josh, it literally brings chills to me and gives me goosebumps just knowing because I could picture little probably four foot six Wally j jumping up to you and, and hugging you on the field. I think at Worcester, wherever it was. Um, just to give you a little heads up, I'm not sure if we ever kind of talked about this. I was literally sitting there up at Plainville High School um, at a recruiting event. Uh, it was a Connecticut junior all-star game. Just kept refreshing my phone. Just every 30 seconds would refresh, refresh. And I kept Texan coach, it was the 24th round, it was the 25th round. Why aren't they taking him? What's going on? I know he's going to get a shot. So uh, I'll always remember where I was when, uh, when you got that. And I probably also never apologize for you for blowing up your phone when I clearly was low man on the totem pole between mom and dad and all the important people that, that I understand how it goes. But uh, I, uh, I was super excited for you back then. I'm still super excited that you're still kind of living out your dream, getting your opportunity. So, oh, yeah. so Josh. <laughs> so, Josh, catch us up in, in closing here. Catch us up to exactly where you are right now. I know you're headed to instructional league. Um, things are probably very, very much up in the air in terms of minor league baseball. But to the best you can, what, what's the situation for you right now? So, uh, so last year uh, I had. Before pre-COVID, I was the whole year uh, I was injured, so I wasn't able to play that year. So coming coming uh, into this season, it was like you know comeback time. You know, getting older, I turned 25 years old, and now it's like it's time to make up for lost time. Time to get back, get back on track, jump a level, do what I got to do. Um, and coming up, um, coming up this spring. It was, it was like foaming at the mouth, ready to get going. I felt like I hadn't played baseball in forever from just having a season off. Like, I hadn't had a season off my whole life. You know, like, we, we go with the plan year in and year out, and then all of a sudden, you know, a year's taken away. And it's like unfamiliar territory. But now it's like more eager than ever. And then COVID hits. You know, it is what it is. We've all been through that. Um, and then at that point, you know, it was all about, you know, what everyone can do. It's like you can do uh, – you, everybody's got to go back home. Everybody's got to be quarantined here or there, whatever state you're in, you know, had its own rules, its own guidelines. But for the most part, it was pretty super locked down for everybody early on. And, uh, and then it, it had to always uh, turn that mindset that I had rehabbing this year prior was always just control, control what I can control. Like this happened. I, the injury was because of a car accident, which was very unfortunate. And uh, it was just – you know, bad luck, but, you know, getting uh, getting uh, swallowed by self-pity is just, like, 
not what you can do. You got to be able to, you know, bounce back whatever way you can. And I was waiting and waiting for my next opportunity that whole year. And that mentality kind of helped me cope with like the second year in a row of not playing with COVID. And it was just like control what you control, you know, and not think about what you can't do, but think about what you can do. Little things to get better here and there. You got time for yourself. Figure out, get in tune with your body, which is what I was doing, figuring out mechanical issues that I have that, you know, muscle memory stuff that I needed to work through and just trying to be as productive as possible with, with the situation that was given to us. So with all this time off, obviously they canceled our season. You know, we knew it was coming for the most part. Um, and so if, if you weren't a guy that was on the taxi squad, you know, you were basically left to fend for yourself, try and figure out an indie ball situation uh, or, you know, get, get your work in on the side with guys, you know, whatever you can do. And I, and, uh, so for the most part, all summer, I was, you know, doing that, doing that same thing, uh, just grinding that out, just like everybody else had been. Uh, and so now getting into the, the later days where this, our season would basically be over, they were telling us, you know, you're going to shut down uh, unless they're approved for inch trucks at this time. And then we got an email saying that they will be approved for the minor leagues to hold inch trucks. So, uh, and I, I didn't really know if I'd be one of those guys simply because, you know, I hadn't played the year before. I wasn't sure because they hadn't got eyes on me. So much, except for this past spring, like where I'd be as far as, you know, in their eyes, where I'd be on the list. Uh, there was a round of cuts early in quarantine. Uh, everything was a, felt real uncertain. And uh, so I got uh, this call now to come down to, to instructs with about 50 some odd guys. Uh, and and it's, it feels to me like a huge opportunity just for them to get some eyes on me. Uh, having not played now two seasons, it's, uh, it's a, literally an absolute blessing just to have this opportunity. And uh, so going down, get going down now, it's going to be, uh, I, I believe, we're going to just going to get to be scrimmaging, getting work in, which is just a, you know, a sigh of relief finally to like be able to get into some live competition, but not only, not only just facing hitters like here and there, like we've been doing on quarantine, but actually getting a game field, putting on a jersey, putting on a uniform and getting in front of the guys who are controlling my future from here on out. And so the way I see it is this is like, basically this is my season right here. It's like, it's going to be a month and a half of, of playing and, uh, but it, like their evaluation at this point could determine my future. So I'm just ready to let it eat and do everything I can do and go from there. Just have fun, just have fun playing again and, and just uh, put all my energy towards it, towards doing what we love, you know? Well, we obviously wish you nothing but the best, Josh, and you're getting to live uh, that every college baseball player's dream. Um, and it's well-deserved because you worked super hard for it. Um, we, uh, we definitely will be keeping in touch and obviously keeping tabs on you. Hopefully, you know, I'm ready to turn on SNY and have you, you know, trot out of the bullpen and come into a game for the Mets, um, which may not be that far off. Who knows? Um, but, again, stay safe. We wish you the best. Thank you so much for coming on. I know you were um, having a long road trip today, but taking the time out is something we really appreciate, bud, and um, we'll obviously be, uh, we'll be in touch. Stay safe, okay? Yeah, before I go, I just wanted to just say one more time, like how, how big of an influence both of you guys were on my career and helping me bounce back from that sort of dark place where I was like mentally, mechanically, you guys played a huge part, both of you, that, that 2017 season of, of me getting out of that and being where I am today. So a lot of credit to you guys. I know like after college, you know, I don't get to talk all that much, but you know, all the credit to you. I appreciate all the, uh, all the compliments, you know, all the good stories. But I hope, I hope you guys know how influential you were on me and my career. You know, I wouldn't be here without you guys. So, so thank, thank you both, and it was thank you for having me on. It was awesome getting to talk to you guys again, and, and uh, good luck, uh, good luck next season coming up. Yeah, and like I said, Josh, we'll stay in touch. And, and just in closing, um, I say this all the time: as much as as you feel like we impacted you, um, you know, you've done the same for us. Believe me. Um, it's been, you know, for, for almost all of our guys that, that have come through the program, um, having lasting relationships and having these type of conversations after you're done um, in our program is, is the reason we do this. Um, and to see you having success is, 
is nothing but the best for us. Um, so stay safe. Let's, uh, let's make some jumps as quick as we can. Get up that ladder and, and get you to Flushing, New York, um, right to City Field. All right? All right. Go to work and make that happen. All right, my man. Drive safe, and, and we will talk to you soon, bud. Take care. All right, see you. Thanks, guys. I mean, Josh, Josh, you know, hit it on the head. You know, I, I think he was a guy, coach, that we can probably both say it's one of those athletes that you know what he could be capable of, and when you don't see it for a full year like we didn't, but then he goes and, and rededicates himself, and I don't even know if that's the word, but figures some things out and then comes back as a, a completely different person the next year and then goes and takes huge strides during that year to then get from a guy that – we didn't know what he was going to be to be a guy that gets drafted by the Mets 12 months later. I mean, it's, that's, that's a storybook type of, uh, type of a story, right? Um, a Hollywood script even. But he, everything he said just brings me back to that year of him. And, and you could probably name five, six guys on that team yeah. that did similar things, right, and really upped their game. Um, the Dave Palmers of the world, the Tim Kennedys, um, you could keep going. The Wall Ravens, the Petrillos, the Pirellis. So, absolutely, and I think he he kind of hit the nail on the head where it was they were pulling for the team. They weren't pulling for himself. I, and I'm not saying that Josh came in that that first year and pulled for himself, but but like you said, he touched on a little bit. You're coming in, you're a South Florida transfer, you're a big lefty, you got a lot of a high expectations. And you got to go out there and you perform, and you have to put that pressure on yourself to be the best you can. You got to live up to the hype. But if you just retract back a little bit and realize that you don't have to live up to anything, you just got to be a piece of the puzzle. You got to pull your, your weight a little bit. You got to do your job when your number's called upon. That's really what it's about. I mean, I even think back all those guys you named, it's perfect, but what a, a guy like Colin Keyes, who comes in and didn't have much of a role, and then all of a sudden he drops down and he becomes a great, great asset to the program as well. And, and talking about that team, joining us now is Joe Royer. Um, last on? but not least, <laughs> um, he was involved in that team on the coaching perspective. Um, let's just talk a little bit about, um, before we start anything, Joey. Okay. Let's start at the very beginning. So it's 2012. Yep. I, just get, I just take over at UNH, and I am inheriting, obviously, a recruiting class and a team um, <clears throat> that I didn't know at all, right? So, right. Yep. so this, is, this, is, this is good. Like, Coach Spoli, you'll enjoy this. So I'm, 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 I'm getting as much information, obviously, about the guys on the roster that I can before I get there and just try to, you know, getting to know them was going to have to happen in person. You know, I did make phone calls and things like that, but you know how awkward that can be. Like, hey, I just took over the program. I know you didn't sign on to play with me, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the one scouting report I get for, of, of Joey Royer is, hey, this kid pitched in a Little League World Series, um, which – Obviously is the truth. So your, your Little League team made it all the way to the Little League World Series on ESPN, the whole thing. Now, we did watch. We did watch. Oh, yeah, a, we did. A clip of Joey pitching in the Little League World Series and giving up an absolute nuke to some kid from some country somewhere in the Little League World Series. <laughs> um, but it's just funny that that was the first thing. I said, okay, this kid pitched in the Little League World Series. Like, um, but then, you know, obviously as it unfolds, um, it was nothing but a great, um, at least on my end, um, experience being around Joe. Um, so, Joe, bring us – let's just start at the beginning. Obviously, coming from Maine, you, yep. you commit to come to UNH um, under, the, under the idea you're going to be playing for a different coaching staff, and then all of a oh, sudden yeah. I yep. show. So just kind of take back anything you remember from that. Just let's hear yeah. it. Well, I, I got something for you that I don't think you, you knew at the time either. Um, but I actually verbally committed to Merrimack, and the same thing happened to me a year before. Wow. The coach, the coach left. Um, they offered to keep my scholarship, but I was like, I'm not going to play for some guy that doesn't know who I am. And then, <laughs> <laughs> little, you know, same exact scenario at UNH, except it's, you know, almost two months before school's about to start. And, uh, <laughs> You know, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, this guy gave me a call. He seems, he seems legit. Let's give him a shot. Like, <laughs> and um, you ended up being uh, just one of the most incredible coaches I've ever had and in the experience at UNH. 
I'll never forget. And I'm so thankful to have had it and been able to share it with all the friends that I'll have for a lifetime. So. And I think that's really important. Like the, what you just said, the friends that you'll have for a lifetime that you probably obviously didn't know before you got here. Yep. I think that's the ultimate prize. And I'm sure coach agrees. The ultimate prize playing college baseball or playing a sport in college, in my mind, is having that opportunity to have those relationships. Um, but let's get back to some individuals here with you. Um, <laughs> you were essentially, in my mind, one of the most decorated postseason guys we've ever had. And I'm going to tell you why. Your freshman year, your freshman year, okay, the, the expectation was kind of unknown. What, what was our team yeah. going to be? Yep. Nobody, you know, they, the postseason really wasn't an, an automatic before I got there um, right. for a lot of reasons. No, no blame on anyone. So we get down to um, basically having to, to get into our last conference weekend and win two out of three against a tough Adelphi team on the road. Um, Joey pitches in the first game because we go extra innings. Um, we end up losing that game. So now we have to you know, sweep a doubleheader. We end up doing it. Um, in very dramatic fashion, we, we, we sweep them, we get in. So now we're in the any 10 has the first round of the playoffs is yep. an elimination game one and done as coach Spola, you know, and, and obviously as Joey, you know, so I remember I'm sitting in the office with, with coach Treza at the time. And he goes, who are you going to throw? And we, we kind of had everybody available in a way. Um, we probably couldn't have started the guys, obviously that started the three games over the weekend. Um, but possibly, and I just remember telling him, I think Royer will shut these guys out. I think he'll give us exactly what we're looking for. You know, at the time I, I remember saying he's too young and dumb to even realize how big of a deal this is. Like, let's just give him the ball. Yeah. I mean, when you called me, I mean, I think I was like at Dairy <laughs> Queen, just like, yeah. you know, fixing yeah. a Sunday or something. So, <laughs> yeah. and I remember calling you and telling you, and I, I hung up and I go, I remember talking to Coach Trezor, and I'm like, I don't even know if he cares. Like, he, he may be excited. I don't know, but we'll find no, out. I, was, I didn't know what to say. You know what the best part was is when you called me, I was with Mike Capolino. Oh, God. Of all and guys. he looks at me, and he goes, dude, that's legit. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at it then, he goes on to face a very, pay, a very tough pace team. And correct, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Nothing, no big deal. Just no bragging, no humble brag. Just a complete game shutout. No big deal. Yeah, no big deal. No big deal. Yeah, complete game shutout. We move on to the weekend. Shocked the world. We were the four seed. They were the one, and we ended their yeah. season. And Royer, re, that right there cemented his postseason legend right there. Because then I said to myself, <laughs> this comes up again. He's already done this as a freshman. Like, we got a oh, guy. Yeah. I, I, I'm sealed up for another three years, like, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. So, we go into your sophomore year. You don't pitch the elimination game, but you pitch a, a super important, um, in 2013, super important win against LeMoyne in the semis of that year where we win the tournament and it's our first any 10 championship. You pitch against LeMoyne if, and start, right? And oh, yeah. No, I'm sorry, you didn't start. You didn't no, start. No, I, I, I came in a relief. Yep. And you threw five innings and got the win. And then the following in the finals against Merrimack, I even called you back out there again for a quick <laughs> little, you know, just to plug the gap in those last yeah. seven, eight, nine I, innings. I just wanted some action. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to <laughs> add to the lore. He throws another scoreless inning in the finals where we have to beat Merrimack to win the tournament. We go to a regional. He does it. That's his sophomore year. Now his junior year comes up. Guess what? We have that first round elimination game. Guess who's pitching? Joey Royer. This is 2014. <laughs> seven innings, just seven innings, shut out. No big deal. We win the game one nothing. He doesn't get the win, but it's seven innings, shut out, like he's born to do it. So I'm just running him out there in all these elimination games. Um, then, just for good measure, your senior year, right back at it with pace again. It's another seven yeah. innings. But this one, you didn't have a great outing. It was seven innings, one run. You didn't throw yeah. shut out. Yeah, so. it was all right. So you're talking about a 3-0 and record with one no decision in the game we won and a 2-0 and record in those, those ever-important elimination games. To me, you know, you're on the Mount Rushmore of uh, postseason pitchers wow. for you. So, I needed that. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't logging on thinking I was going to get all these uh, accolade rundown. 
yeah, well, well, now they stop. Then now we get into the, you know. Now we talk about um, how boring my life is now. Yeah, well, we'll get into that. So to me, again, it, it came down to your whole career to me was, and this is this is what I try to strive for in all of our athletes and coaches. Bully and I talk about this all the time. You were a completely different guy from your freshman year to your senior year in terms of your development as a pitcher. Um, and obviously there's that, that, that thing of where you grow up and you get older, but you are not even close to the same guy your freshman year that you were your senior year. And I mean that in a good way. Um, yeah. But you did go through that development. Um, you already touched, obviously, upon the relationships you had that you still have with guys that you didn't know before you got here. Um, and then you decide to come back and kind of flip the script and come on as a graduate assistant coach. Um, that's kind of where the Raspoli Royer paths now start to cross. So oh, yeah. Coach Raspoli, give us some background and, and some Joey, Joey Royer thoughts. Like you started to, you didn't know him as a player. You didn't, you didn't get to see him. And then you guys start crossing paths as coaches. And, and how does that all go down? Well, it's always funny, the dynamic of, first of all, this is my first year. So this is my volunteer year. So I'm coming in to a coaching staff, a school, a program that I know nothing about. Um, there was really no prior relationship between us. Um, I didn't really, as much as I grew up in Connecticut, didn't really know much about the program. It was division two. I was coming from a division three school that I was coaching at. I played division one down South. So UNH baseball minus me going to camp one year. Um, I really didn't have any idea what it was about at the time. I had no clue. Um, so you mix in kind of the element of me coming in and then Joey, who to me, it's always that funny dynamic of, all right, I just played for this coach and his coaching staff. And now all of a sudden I'm a coach and I'm sure coach is going to probably grill you on that a little bit as it is, but it's, it's that indecision and that, okay, well now we're kind of colleagues. We're kind of same on the same level, but you're still my coach. And I don't really know exactly what I can talk about from from a personal standpoint and from a social standpoint, as opposed to what do I need to hide from you still? And what can I let out of the bag? Um, So just that dynamic. And and what's funny, Joe, is I was in that same thing. You know what I mean? Like, all right, I'm teetering that line between I'm trying to kind of impress his coaching staff and and make a good mark and kind of have some sort of say. How much do I really let out of the bag about the real Tom Raspoli and and, and all those things that kind of come into play as well? So I feel like we went through those growing pains a little bit. Um, It's funny. I actually, I don't know if I've ever actually had this conversation with you. Remember back, obviously, guys, for everybody listening, if you're a volunteer baseball coach anywhere, but especially at a Division II school in the Northeast, there's no money there. Um, So obviously, with, and I will say this, and I give them the utmost respect for it, when you're a volunteer in our program, you're a volunteer. When you can make it, you make it. As much time and energy as you can put into it, you can, but you're not required. Coach gets that. It's just there's other things that need to be done. And so he allowed me to kind of, I had a painting company at the side. Um, so anytime I'd have to work and go do things, I would do it. Um, I ended up getting one job, Joe, if you remember that it was, I was able to do all nights out at, uh, at a facility yeah. in like the Wallingford North Haven area. Um, so after practice, I'd go paint from when they shut down at whatever it was, eight or nine o'clock. Um, and I would paint from 10 o'clock at night until about four in the morning. Well, well, Joey came with me a couple times and, and helped me out a little bit. And I remember, conversations we had there that really allowed me to learn a lot about the program. Um, some of the players that we had kind of heart to hearts about, and you told me <laughs> weird stories about what they're really like and, and, and coach Milano and coach Mac at the time, um, you added so much value to me really learning about the university of new Haven, um, the program, the history, um, really kind of where it was rooted from where coaches kind of values came from and, and different stories and, you probably have no idea how much I actually learned about that aspect of it, but I did. And, and you actually helped me. I mean, I was, this was kind of my fifth year of college coaching at the time. You helped me grow tremendously because I came into a program. Like I said, the coach always said, Hey, there's no, there's no totem pole. We're a staff. Everybody's equal. If you have any input on practice plans or things we should do with lineup, I'm all ears. Like, please throw it out to me. It was not, you're my volunteer go hit fungos, go throw coach first base, and, and I don't want to hear from you. It was the exact opposite. Um, but even with that, you still have that kind of 
maybe a little bit of indecision going up and saying, well, I think we should do this, even though I've been here for two and a half weeks. But anyway, long story short, go help me big time really kind of cement the type of coaching staff I was a part of and that my opinion did matter. And that I, you gave me a lot of confidence to, if I wanted to say something about the team, I could do that. And it was kind of those painting conversations for those couple of days back in the day that I learned so much about the program. Um, and obviously I'm happy to kind of have a home here and everything else, but you, uh, you helped me grow as a coach, Joe, uh, whether you know it or not, or whether honestly I even knew it or not. I look back at certain things throughout my coaching career and, uh, and that was definitely a big step for, for me. So I appreciate it. Wow, it's, funny. Appreciate nice. it's funny how you guys tiptoe around me a little bit at first, right? And then – Oh, then, I did big time. Because yeah. I mean, me, me and you always had a really good relationship even when I was a player. But then yep. when I was a coach, I'm like, oh, like, what do, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> what do I do with my hands? Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to yeah. do then, here. But then you start to, you know, then you start to crack the shell on me and, and, and on a personal level really get to know me and you figure out you had nothing to worry about the whole time. I'm more blacked yeah. out than anybody you know. <laughs> so there was really no, you know, there's really no reason to be, you know, walking on eggshells. Um, but, Joey, wh what are some of the things, you know, as an alum now, um, and we're going to get to, um, you know, what you're up to now and, and the success you're having, but what are some of the things as a, as a Charger, as a baseball um, program member, what are some of the things that you think – helped you get to where you are now with anything from your time as a baseball player at the, at UNH translate into what you obviously ultimately became, which is a very successful accountant. Do you, do you have anything that carried over? Yeah. I mean, I would say like a big, a big part is the structure. And, you know, the, the thing I liked about playing baseball at UNH was mainly how you handled the, you know, the work life balance, I guess. Um, and, you know, we weren't just there to play baseball. We were there to, you know, get an education and learn and take advantage of the opportunity to, you know, get, you know, not a free education, but a substantially big part of your education taken care of. And I think that, you know, a lot of people waste that. And a lot of programs don't really preach, you know, you need to do good in school, this, that, and the other. They just care about keeping you on the field. But, you know, I watched numerous players graduate and then, you know, what are you doing now? And it's just like, I, I just couldn't, you know, lose that opportunity at all. And, and uh, I think that you put us in a really good position to recognize that. So talk a little bit about right now, where you're at, what you're doing, um, obviously killing it in the business world. So, so give us the details. What exactly are you doing? So I, um, I don't know if I told you this either, but I, I left uh, my original firm that I worked for right when I got done with you as a GA, a small firm in Old Saybrook. And then, um, you know, I was kind of getting bored of that. I thought the work was too easy. Um, and I really wanted a taste of the, uh, the corporate life. So I took a job at RSM. It's a huge accounting firm. They're a multinational firm. Um, and I was there for two years and ended up leaving to go back to my small firm. Um, and that wasn't uh, anything where I couldn't handle the pressure or anything like that. But I just see myself, um, you know, one day hopefully – being in a position where I can start my own business or, you know, be a successor of what they have going in Old Saybrook. Um, you know, I love being around people, talking with people, working with people. I didn't want to just be another number. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm the CPA. I live in Brantford, Connecticut, and I work in Old Saybrook. Um, so if you need your taxes done, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a pretty interesting thing, Joey, because you, you kind of, you, you got the opportunity to branch on, move out, and then get yep. into a bigger corporate situation and, you know, found out it wasn't for you, which I think in life is important to be able to have those experiences to kind of pare down and define what's going to make you happy is, is, is not something actually everybody even gets to do, but let alone figuring that out and then coming back, you know, I think is a great spot because that now I would assume at this point, like you just said, you know, you're where you're supposed to be. And you, yeah. you probably have no, you know, in the back of your head, well, what if I went and did this? You did right. go and do that, right? So um, I, I, I think we try and do our best. And, and, and Coach Raspoli and I, you know, talk about this a lot and, and, and put a lot of effort into preparing our guys for, you know, essentially real life, which is exactly what comes after your four years of playing baseball, going to Toad's oh, Place, yeah. downtown New Haven, and doing those <laughs> things, right? 
Like after that's done, you know, this thing hits you right away, as I always say. And I know you experienced that. You had a little longer leash, right? You came back, you were a GA. But after that was done, it was time to basically fend for yourself and figure out life. Yeah, um, absolutely. And coach and I always try to just provide the direction, of course, and positioning. But ultimately, it's up to our players like you who put in the, the work, give the effort, and then, you know, succeed. So as much as we did that for you, you did the other end of it. There's no question. Nothing was given to you, um, just like it wasn't on the field. You know, you didn't, you, didn't become our, you didn't become the Tom Glavin of our staff in the postseason by accident or a guy I leaned on. You, whenever ever I think of you, Joe, um, and this is as player, as, as a coach, dependability is the, is the word that always comes to my mind. You're an ultra-dependable person. Um, whether that was showing up every day on time, I knew you always would right? Um, being yeah. ready to go every day. I always knew you were. Um, and then obviously giving you the ball was ultra dependable too. Um, to me, the dependability was the thing. I, I'm sure coach agrees. Um, I didn't even realize about the whole painting experience and the, the painting relationship you guys you had. Yeah, you didn't know. I, we, yeah, we talked for hours. We really got... Well, uh, I knew you were doing it, it, so I had to figure you didn't sit there in silence for seven hours. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, just, just having that, that, that time to to talk to each other like that, um, as coach said, it's probably something you're never going to forget and, and, and help both of you guys. Um, yeah. but I think in general, um, you kind of got to experience everything, Joe, you got to experience winning on the field. You got to winning a conference championship, the dog piles, regionals, you got to come back as a coach, you know, and kind of experience that side of things. Um, and now obviously in the business world, in your profession, you, yeah. You've experienced a couple different things as well. Um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, that's what we want for all of our guys to have those life experiences. But I will say this, not everybody, as you mentioned, takes advantage of it. Not everybody, you know, does get every ounce out of it. I felt like, and coach, you can chime in on this. I felt like you were a guy that got every ounce out of um, being at UNH, being part of our program and really cherished the opportunity where sometimes it gets taken Absolutely. for granted, right? Um, yeah. But, um, again, Coach, you can chime in. I, I feel like you were a guy that, that squeezed every ounce out of the entire, you know, experience in a way. Appreciate that. Yeah, for yep. sure. Even, even, Joe, even when you were the GA and, and there was times where you didn't have work to do in the office, you were in there. You just wanted yeah. to be around. You wanted the experience. You wanted to be a part. You're always, hey, what can I do? Can I do this? Can I help with this? And, and that's just a testament to, obviously, your personality, your dedication, and – and honestly, nothing more for me, but then your love of the game and your game kind of at the University of New Haven, it was, it was evident. I think he also got to see me in a different light and saw how <laughs> – Oh, I, I wanted to hang, to hang out with him all with the time. <laughs> yeah, like I think he figured out right away, like this is I – I got to squeeze every ounce out of this. Yeah, this is – Where sick. are we going to lunch? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, where are we, go, where are we so, going to lunch? So yeah, right. Like, is this the same guy? But, yeah, and then <laughs> – you know, that goes with a lot of necessity, right? You have to kind of, um, you know, be that way. But I'm glad you got to see that part. I'm, I, I consider you obviously someone that I'm going to be in touch with. Um, so, and, and, you know, I, I know that obviously um, I just dominated you this past week in fantasy football. So yeah, we're, we're, obviously in touch. Um, <laughs> we're obviously in touch no matter what. And, and I feel like at the end of the day, you're the, you're the shining example of the alum that, we want that will always be involved um, and will always kind of bleed that, that blue and gold. Um, and, you know, when I need my taxes done and I need you to find every single inch of a tax break you can, I know who to call. Um, you know, Coach can probably say the same thing, but um, it was great catching up with you. Uh, we thank you so much for coming on. Um, as, as my show kind of moves forward, I'm sure I'll have you on under different circumstances. Yeah, uh, absolutely. With probably different topics and, and, and the directions <laughs> I – I normally go in. Um, I plan. I have. I have a lot of things planned out, and you're on that list somewhere, whether you know it or not. So I'll. I'll be reaching out. But um, it was great to catch up like this. And um, you know, in closing, obviously, just stay safe, um, which we all kind of need to do right now. And um, we just. We, we couldn't be more than happier to know where you're at and how you're doing, and um, and and that we created some some fond memories and experiences for you, because as I always say, and Coach will attest to. That's at the end of the day what this is about. Um, winning goes into there, of course, but I think you probably remember some of the experiences and, and now cherish some of the friendships you made um, 
just as and find those equally as important. So, um, Coach, you have you can get the parting shots or parting words on Joey if you want. Um, but again, um, we wish you nothing but the best, and and obviously stay safe. So, thank you, Coach. Great seeing you, Joey. We will uh, we'll be in touch, and 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 um, again, when I need my taxes done, I know who to call. So, <laughs> excellent. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. You got it, man. Take care. Yeah, you as well. So that kind of wraps up um, the three alumni we wanted to spotlight. Um, I don't know about you, Coach. I feel like the same thing kind of resonated throughout all three. It was basically that idea of their experience. That's what everybody talks about, right? And um, those guys had to, had the conference championships and regionals to talk about. But I think you really felt, at least I did, it was about them talking about the entire program and, and, and the team rather than, hey, we won 40 games or, hey, we won 38 games. Um, two guys were lucky enough to be drafted, so they obviously had that component. But um, what did you get out of it? I saw that. I saw that common thread of the experience. Absolutely. And I think you hit the, you, the nail on the head. I guess, so for me, with Joey and Demo, I never got to see their playing career. Um, so I don't have that. But I have them as kind of that second part of their growth, so to speak, where it's now I'm after college and now I have to kind of experience life a little bit and transition from the college life to real life. Um, yeah. And it's refreshing to note they both did it pretty quickly at this day and age to be as successful as they are in that short amount of time. It's fantastic. But I think we I think the day to day battle for you and I is we're always looking at some of our players and it's it's the immaturity or it's this. And to me, it's not any of that. It's not that they're not capable. It's not that they're immature. They're inexperienced. Um, and I think this whole thing is about that experience. It's exactly what you just touched on. And I think these guys, um, what was really impressive to me, especially with, again, I talk a little bit more about Josh with the playing career, but um, I was around Joey, obviously, for the one year, but Demo for multiple, is the way that they're able to take the emotions out of it as they look back and reflect. Um, to me, it's, it's a huge thing. And it's, it's, it's very evident when I, when I listen to them speak that it was emotional for those guys. Um, yeah. Demo, even as a young coach and being a GA and getting out of pro ball and, and not knowing exactly what he wants to do and dealing with baseball kind of being taken away as a player, even though it's still filling that void as a coach, there was a lot of inexperience there. Um, obviously, Josh talked about his growth and his personal growth and, and looking back. But I think, I think the fantastic part is, is their reflection back, they're able to look back, remember it, understand it, know that they learn from it, but now the emotions out of it for them and they can yep. still do it. And I just, I feel that that's a great part. Listening to them speak is, uh, it's great. It means they, they did it the right way. Yeah. And it's, and that's, that's a great point too, because if you look at someone like Demo, he, he candidly described his struggle in the beginning. Um, Josh, same thing, his first year, um, you know, Joey had a little bit more kid gloves. He just happened to have success, like out of the gate. And, um, you know, but they all kind of, you're right, took the emotion out and it became almost like sterile. Like, all right, this is what happened. Um, yeah. But it, it, it's, I think you're right. Like we, I find myself getting stuck in the present of the guys we have and getting those frustrations, not knowing that this is going to be the other end eventually, Right. Like the same frustrations I have with some of our guys, I had with Walker, I had with Demo, I had with Royer, and then you look at them now, and I mean they're in just such fantastic spots in life. Um, a so absolutely, I mean as as the texts roll in from from different players on yep. our team that I hold on my phone about things, I yep. keep reflecting back that it's not an experience. It's just it's not a maturity. It's an experience, and that's what they're yep. here for. That's what this whole thing is all about. These right. four years for them is about getting that experience. And like you always tell them, it's setting you up for, for what's next in life and what's really important in life. And, and it's nice to know that those three are obviously three great pieces of the program um, that we can look back and, and really be happy about. Well, getting to talk to those three will make us answering the texts we're getting right now and the phone calls we're going to get at least over the next couple of weeks um, reminds us that, that, that there is going to be some fruits to that labor. Um, but that being said, I hope everybody enjoyed this um, edition of our alumni spotlight. Take a deep show. Um, 
we will probably do this again. We will be featuring different alums um, down the road, but we hope you enjoyed this version of it. Um, stay safe, everyone. And um, we will be back sooner rather than later. Take care.